Whoa, what a blessing. What a blessing. Welcome to the Flow Church midweek service. It's a blessing to be here once again. We are here in the, at the Flow Church in the, in the studio in Accra, Ghana. But wherever you're watching from, we want you to drop a quick hello. Tell us where you're watching from because you see at the Flow Church, we are a big family. We are a global family. We have Flow members all the way from China. We have Flow members all the way from Uganda, UK, America, Brazil, France. We are a big family. So want to know where you're watching from, drop a quick hello and tell us where you're watching from. And I believe that God is going to speak to you today. Also, take this opportunity to share the link. Share the link. You know, many people have given testimonies about what being part of the Flow Church has done in their life. Many, many testimonies have been coming in. I'm sure you'll hear some today. And you'll hear many more over the course of the weeks and the months. And I want you to give somebody the opportunity to also be blessed and to also have a testimony. What do you think? So I think now is the best time to share the link to everybody you know. I'm going to give you a few seconds just to share the link. Yes. Share the link. Like. Comment. If you're not following any of the social media handles, Flow, uh, Flow Church on Instagram, um, on Facebook, on YouTube, make sure you're following, make sure you're subscribing. Because like I said, this is the place to be if you want to come and receive a good word and also receive a blessing and to receive a transformation of your life. Yes, I'm giving you th just a few seconds to share the link. Masota branda la baba. Mi shendele be koza kan da la babi kendele be. Yes, so kosha daba. I can see you, Nana Kwabina. You're flown from Spintex. I can see Aquia Asanti. You're flowing from Australia. What a blessing. I can see Fee Brook. You are flowing and you're watching from Wales. Wow, we are connected everywhere. We are connected everywhere. People flowing all the way from MSCI Cardiff. I can see you, Dr. Daniel Okaiti. You're flowing from MSCI Cardiff. Beautiful. Well, we're about to enter into the service and we've got to do it the right way. Let's enter into the, into the presence of God with a prayer. Wherever you are, I want you to lift up your hand. Wherever you are, whether in your room, whether you're driving, whether you're walking, whether you're at work, wherever you are, lift up your hand as we start to say thank you to God for this opportunity that he's given to us once again to come into his presence. You know, the scripture says that blessed is the man whom thou choosest to approach and whom thou causes to come unto thee. So if you are here and you're in the presence of God, it's because God has blessed you enough to cause you to approach and to bring you close to him. So lift up your hand wherever you are and say, Father, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. I don't see it as a small thing. I don't trivialize it. I don't see it as a small thing. Thank you for choosing me. Thank you for separating me. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to redeem the time. To redeem the time and to pray as often as possible and to spend time with you as often as possible. Rakasata shatabazo kotamali bababanda viyan do konda la ba sende breve ki shanda barebe mata taka tabaro baba ba zika tabrando robo ko shada la ba ki ababa ba zika shanda braza kata zika tabro so ko shanda la baba zakanda bari bebe zika tabranda i can hear some grateful people in brazil lifting up their hands and saying thank you to god i can hear some grateful people all the way in japan lifting up their hands and saying thank you to god i can see some grateful people in North Legon in Ghana lifting up your hands and saying thank you to God and saying to God that my life is not my own. I'm not here because I decided to be here. I'm simply here because the Spirit of God has made me and the breath of the Almighty has given me life. In the name of Jesus, thank you Lord. All the way from Brazil, all the way from Brazil, all the way from France, all the way from UK, all the way from Kenya, all the way from Uganda, all the way from China, 
now, wherever you are, wherever you are, lift up your voice and say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Zikata broso kushata lava, yaka daba vike debelebe sonta branda, ziken debelebe so shanda baribe, raka shanda broso kota. Lord, I give you thanks. We give you thanks. I give you thanks. Yes, I give you thanks because I know that it was not my decision to wake up this morning. It's rather a grace that you've given me because many people went to sleep yesterday but didn't wake up this morning. Many people went to sleep at the beginning of this week but did not wake up this morning. But yet here I am with breath and with that breath I give thanks to you God. Oh God. Makashada brasa kashendele bebi kasa damali mando yakanda bare be kendele be so talia kabaraga yeke chetele bebe be so sabraba kashindele be mizondo rakanda le bakandele be mishindi la bakosa sababa kasa tile yanda baba kosa tama mama atime le mizonta la bakandele be kista rakosendele bebe zima roba oh yes lifting up your voice wherever you are Lifting up your voice and lifting up your almost oh, your own oh, your holy hands and saying thank you to God. Zindo braza kashinda burobo nibrava kashanda laba zekem delebe mison dala kanda laba mila masonda zinde breve kisha malama mason do leme kita baba ya kababi kada bana baba ya zekem de brozo kushanda delebe masonda no mosa delebe. Oh God, 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 yes, Lord, ya to mama mama liba, ma roba shinda laba, mi sanda brando kota laba, mi kata babi kashida laba, zoko da braza kadala, si sente bele bebe, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you know, if, if you're here today, I want you to believe every word of our prophet and every declaration of our prophet who has said that prayer changes things. And it's true. Prayer changes things. If you're here, I want you to believe that prayer changes things. Prayer changes things and prayer changes you. Most importantly, you know, the scripture says in James chapter 5 verse 18, he says that, and he prayed again, so speaking about Elijah, and he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Yo, yes, prayer changed things that were already determined. Yes, prayer changed things in the times of Elijah, and prayer can also change the situations in your life. And you know, I don't want you to think that I'm too bad. This morning I've sinned. This week I have sinned. This year I have sinned. Because if you look at James chapter 5 verse 17, something quite interesting. It says that Elijah was a man subject to like passions. Oh yes, just like you and I. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Oh yes. Scripture says that Elijah was just a, a man just like you and I, weak, frail, and subject to many, many weak things and like passions just like you and I. But the scripture said that the day that he lifted up his hands and prayed, things changed. Things changed. And the same God that changed things in the days of Elijah can also change things in your life, Hallelujah. can change you. Whatever situation in your life seems stuck, whatever situation seems at a standstill, know that through your prayer, through your prayer, things are changing. Hallelujah. Things are changing. Yes, things Lord. are changing. Yes, so today, as we enter into the service, believe that something is going to change. In the name of Jesus. How you came today will not be the same as, you, as how you left. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes. Any, problem, any problems that followed you into today's service, by the end of the service, 
it shall wither and it shall disappear. Yes, Jesus. Because prayer changes things. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice wherever you are. Mama, Lift up your voice wherever you are and declare that prayer changes things. Yes, Lord. I believe that prayer changes things. As I enter into this service, things are changing. Yes, Lord. My situation is changing. My situation is changing. My mind is changing. My heart is changing. The things that used to be a weakness to me by the end of today's service, I shall be able to overcome because prayer changes things. Nibo laba rando sonde nikanda laba tosta vinde braba kota laba shidelebe mazata liba barama manduru mukosanta lide nibranda laba shonda laba kiasta bakote bele nikete bebebe raka shada broso kosha dalaba kiaba bala baba. Na brando lo mo son dele meme kinda la baba ba ne breve ke shinda la ba joko my god my god my god my god my god i thank you that prayer 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 my prayer is changing things my prayer is changing things my prayer is changing things Prayer is changing things for you and your family. Yes, oh yes. Raka shanda la ba kosa tabarika sababa keep on praying isondo makaya raka muso tabunda baba kaya baba akata ba sota brava kasha ne kisa makota tanda baba mesi kata baba bala biko damala mashende bebe kasha something is changing about you my god something is changing about your my god my god something is changing about our life yes lord yes lord mishende lebe sinda la ba kosa of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise, my God, my God. and we give you yes. thanks, my God. In the name of oh, yes. Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Somebody type, my life is changing. My life is changing. My life is changing. My life is changing. Whilst you are typing, my life is changing. You are also telling many of your friends, sharing the link, share the the link to many, many, many platforms like old school platforms like association of extended family platforms hallelujah because somebody would have to hear just a sentence or a word jesus and their lives will change forever in the name of jesus when andrew heard about the christ he didn't keep it to himself he shared the link to simon his brother and one day, Simon became the one who was chosen to be the head. You may never know somebody you may share the link with. Maybe the next person that God is going to choose to use mightily in the name of Jesus. My I want God, to read a God. powerful testimony. Whoa. But I don't want you to be the only one to listen to this testimony. And that is why I want you to call as many people as possible. We have a powerful testimony here. I want to read powerful testimony. Oh, thank you, Lord. Now, if you are ready, we are reading the testimony together. Okay, so let's go. It says, hi, my name is Gifty from the MSCI Cardiff branch. I would like to share a testimony of what God did for my son Jeremy about two weeks ago. Now, he said, about two weeks ago, he fell very ill. He woke me up at dawn and said he, was, he wasn't feeling well. Right. Now, and he hadn't slept all night. And that he got an excruciating headache, feeling cold and restless and high body temperature. I touched his forehead and panicked. So, I immediately wet a flannel with cold water and left it on his forehead. He said, I had to repeat this as his temperature was so high. I left him with his sister in the morning. 
as I had to go to work. Now he said, I came back from work and noticed the temperature hadn't gone down. I decided to take him straight to the GP surgery where he was thoroughly examined by the doctor. The doctor said, though his temperature is very high, he couldn't find anything. She thinks it could be either viral infection or COVID. Now, we came back home and he went straight to bed. Prophet on flow prayer a couple of days before. And he asked us to pray on our handkerchiefs. While he was sleeping, I placed the handkerchief on his forehead and thanked God for healing. I left his room with the handkerchief on him. Just when I got to the door, he jumped out of, the, of sleep and said, Mom, I think I'm feeling better. My God, my God. I said to him, what? No, let's see how it goes tomorrow morning. He said, no, I'm fine. I feel better. I said, wow, God is good. He went to school the next day and told me he felt so well that he joined in the PE lessons. PE means physical education. Prayer changes things. My God. Thank you so much, prophet, for praying with us. I can't even count the blessings I have received and still receiving from the flow prayer. And I encourage all of us to join in the flow. Thank you, our beloved bishop. Well, at this juncture, at this point, somebody is clapping their hands. Somebody is shouting hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody is shouting hallelujah. 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 Amen and amen. amen. You know, she said the GP, you know, said that it could be a viral infection. And guess what? Just last week, um, somebody very famous and known had a viral infection. And then headache, high temperature. It was said this was some infection in the ear. They were trying to solve it and then had one injection and that was the end. He couldn't make it. And so we are reading something like this. It may seem to be a normal headache, but hey, this is a very great miracle that has taken place. What all the things that the doctors did, they couldn't diagnose whatever it was. The handkerchief that has been prayed over by our prophet, My God. The, the man of God. My God. You know, whenever you can't explain something, God's power is available. And guess what? God is doing many things through the flow service. And I want to remind you, after today's midweek service, the next meeting is Friday. Make sure you don't miss flow prayer on Friday. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I didn't hear amen here in the studio. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, wow. What a blessing. What a blessing. And so wherever that we are tonight, guess what? We are just about to zoom into straight. We are going to spend just one moment and just pray that tonight God will open our ears. God will open our heart. God will touch us in a mighty and a special way so that we are going to be blessed by the preaching of the word of God. And so wherever you are, I want you to close your eyes and let's pray. Talk to the Lord and ask the Lord that, Lord, tonight, touch me, speak to me, speak to my heart, speak to my soul. Lord, in the name of Jesus, just for one minute, let's pray that tonight God will speak to you. It's our midweek service. Just pray and say, Lord, speak to me tonight in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Speak to me, Lord. Speak to me. Speak to me. Oh, Jesus. Speak to me. It's a midweek service. And you want to pray that God will speak to you. Pray for the spirit of understanding. On Sunday, prophet taught us that understanding is very key. And so pray, ask for understanding tonight. Ask for understanding, the spirit of understanding. Understanding. Oh, speak to me. Mm, speak to me. Oh, pray, Lord, speak to me. Mm, through your word. Through your spirit, speak your word. Yeah. Speak to me. Oh, speak to me. Somebody pray. Speak to me, Lord. I am listening. I'm listening. I am waiting. I'm waiting. Yeah. 
speak to me. I'm your servant. I'm your servant, Lord. Imamu baradi ke palavara di kadaba zemere dolo shadaba. Speak to me. Speak to me. Oh, speak to me. Speak to me. Ke mu balaba gada laba shandaba. Zagadila baradika palama. Speak to me. Speak to me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Speak to me. Oh, speak to me. Oh, Lord. Through your word. Through your spirit. Through your spirit. Oh, speak to me. Speak to my heart. Speak to me, oh Lord. I am listening. We are listening, Lord. I am waiting. Mm. Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed, and everybody say, type Amen and Amen and Amen and Amen. amen. Well, on Sunday we had a beautiful time in the presence of God. Prophet taught us. He led us to pray. Now, if you remember, when he was leading us to pray, he led us to pray, we should pray um, that the days, he said, pray to redeem the time because the days are evil. And one of the things that he told us, do you remember the bread? The bread, that you leave the bread there and then within some few minutes, some few hours, you come and then the bread has changed. And so he taught us about the corruption. Now, for us to go deeper and understand more, I want to recommend a book. Now, the title of the book is Transform Your Pastoral Ministry. Yes, Transform Your Pastoral Ministry. When you read Transform Pastoral Ministry, chapter 13, prophet shares about how to intercede against the law of degeneration. And so, that is, um, we, we, are, we are getting deeper into understanding. So, I'm giving you one key that you, you use. So, between now and Friday, when you are praying, take the book, Transform Your Pastoral Ministry, open to chapter 13, and use it to pray against the law of degeneration. All right. Now, if you remember the second prayer topic, he told us that we should pray and ask the Lord three things that we should do to redeem the time. I don't know whether you remember. And he said we should write them down. I don't know whether you wrote yours. Now, some of, some of us are thinking, three things, what? Now, the answer is also in another book. Mm, amazing. Now, the title of the book is Many Are Called. Yes, Many Are Called. So, I'm recommending Many Are Called, chapter 17. Now, chapter 17 of Many Are Called, Prophet teaches about, the title is Redeeming the Time, chapter 17. Now, there's a subtitle. The subtitle is 101 Ways. To redeem the time. So some of those of us were thinking the three things, you know, which one should I write? I am giving you a book written by the preacher on, of Sunday. He's also an author. In his book, many are called, uh, chapter 17, 101 ways to, read the, to redeem the time. So take your time and read through the 101. You will pick one and then you will be blessed. So take three out of the 101. Make it your prayer point and say, Lord, these are the things I'm going to do to redeem the time. Somebody say amen. Now, if you remember, prophet taught us extensively on understanding. And he said that one of the charges he was giving to us is that all pastors, bishops, we are going to enter into a season of schools in our churches. We are going to take our time and teach people the things they need to know about the word of God, about basic doctrines like salvation. And the, and, the, and the typical example he gave was that anytime there is an altar call and a lot of people come forward to give their lives to Jesus, people who have been in church for one, one year still coming forward, we should, we should also be alarmed that what is it that they have not understood. And so tonight, we are going to spend the rest of our 15 minutes to go into the first chapter of Key Facts. Key facts. Now, if you are watching and you don't have an idea of what this book is about, now look at the title of the book, Key Facts for New Believers. 
there are things that our believers in our churches must know. And not just know on the surface level, but know deeply. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, we are going to take our time and go to chapter 1. Today we are just looking at chapter 1. We are going through chapter 1. What, do we, what are we doing? We are, we are gaining understanding. Understanding into what salvation is. Hallelujah. What salvation is. Now, in chapter 1, the title is How to Become a Born Again Christian. Now, somebody will say, ah, how to become a born again Christian? This one is very simple. It's basic. Do we, have to, do we have to learn anything about it? Yes. We have to learn something about it because it is possible for people to also be around and come to church without becoming born again. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, if you want to be born again, now, I want to remind you that our midweek service is also a time that you can ask questions. And so while the, while the teachings are going on, you have the opportunity. There's a question that is on your mind. There's something you've been thinking about. You know, today, whilst the teaching is going on, you can be able to send your question. All right? Now, there's a number that you're going to see on the screen. That's a number. It's a WhatsApp number. I want you to send your question to this WhatsApp number you're going to see on the screen whatever question that bothers your mind about your Christian life, if it's a personal question, just send the question and just tell us that, please, make it anonymous. Don't mention my name. We are not even going to mention your name all the way, um, all the same. We are going to read out the question and then bring you a scriptural response. So please note down the WhatsApp number, plus 233-550-66-9630. This is Flow Midweek Service. Your question will be answered this evening. Now, let's go back to chapter 1 of Key Fact. If you have your book, you can take your book and let's go through. If you want to be born again, you must do two important things. So please remember. Number one, you must first believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Why are we saying this? You see, right now, right now, we are learning about how to become born again. And we are being taught right now eh, that Number one thing to do to become born again is to believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Now, this is even a light to some of us. Because you may easily go to tell somebody that, my friend, you have to give your life to Jesus so, so that you can prosper. You have to give your life to Jesus so that life will be better for you. It's not about life being better for you. It's about accepting and believing first that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So we are learning this evening, you, 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 I know you were thinking that, oh, born again is so born again is something, but we are learning number two very important things about born again is that you must believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. And so tonight, we are also being empowered as, as pastors, as Christians. Next time we stand out to evangelize, to tell people about Jesus, it's not about, you know, hmm, the way life has become now. Hey, the world has become very wild. Though. My friend, if you don't give your life to Jesus Christ, you, you will be poor. It's not about that. It's about believing in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Why? Why? In 1 John 5, 1. 1 John 5, 1. Look at it. 1 John 5, 1. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ, is born of God. So, in the word of God, somebody who is born of God or born again, first of all, whosoever believeth. You know, I remember when I was a missionary in Burkina Faso. Let me share my story, interesting story. I went to meet this young guy who was a carpenter by our church. So that day, I had really decided that I was going to tell him something that would change him. You see, there's nothing outside the word of God that you can tell somebody to change him. The word of God and the Holy Spirit. So that day, as I sat him down, I wanted to tell him something. So I told him that, my friend, you must give your life to Jesus Christ so that your life will be blessed. So that God will make you to be able to marry. <laughs> so
so that God will give you a good job. The gentleman was looking at me. He didn't talk. He listened to me as I was talking. And then I asked him, do you go to church? Then he told me that he belongs to another religion. Then he told me, he looked at me and told me that all the things that I have, the incentives about being born again, I've told him. He doesn't like any of them. And that he would want to die one day and go to paradise to be among some virgins and other things. Then I realized that the reason that I was giving to this brother to be born again, it was non non sila. Do you know non sila? <laughs> it's not in the syllables. Hallelujah. And then we are living in times where, you know, we are, li- we are living in times where you can easily here, come and give your life to Jesus so that he doesn't like any of them and that he would want to die one day. And... Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Hallelujah. So, we are learning. Number one, you must first believe in Jesus Christ as the son of God. Number two. Number two. Secondly, you must ask him to come into your heart and your life. Hallelujah. Are you, are you here? Are, are you following what we are, we, are, we are studying? Number one, you must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So we are learning today, please, you know, the reason why we go to tell people, we go and invite people, we draw people from, they come to my church, let's go to church. They will be there. They are not born again. But some of the reasons we told them to come to church was that so that they can be able to get a good job and to marry one day. No, that's not about it. What it's about is believing that Jesus is the Son of God. And number two, what is number two? Number two is that, secondly, you must ask him to come into your heart and your life. You must say a prayer like this and mean it from the bottom of your heart. What prayer? Listen to the prayer. Lord Jesus. So I want you to also say the prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you as a sinner, lost and condemned to hell. I repent of my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe with all my heart that you died on the cross and rose up again for my sins. I open up my heart to you and receive you as my Lord and my personal Savior. Please take control of my life and make me what you want me to be from today, I am yours and you are mine. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful gift of salvation. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Now, tonight, we have learned something very important because we have been telling people, give your life to Jesus so that you will get a good job, so that your visa will be granted. It's not about visa or a good job is about believing in Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Number two, saying the prayer. You know, one day I went to a church to preach about Basenta. As I taught them the Basenta, I was invited by another church to, that they have seen that our church will do Basenta. So it is working. So I taught them about Basenta and I told them that your Basenta must grow. And the way that Basenta must grow is that you must be able to evangelize. Then one of the elders of the church lifted up his hand and said, Pastor, please, we don't know how to evangelize, so please teach us. Because in this church, we don't know. But tonight, we have learned two major things. Two major things. To believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and to say a prayer. Pastor, so what about if I don't say the prayer? Because, I mean, I came to church. When I came, they said, if you want to give your life to Jesus, lift up your hands and come forward. But me, I didn't come forward because me, I believe that. Listen, it's very important to say the prayer. How can I explain it for you to understand? Imagine you and your friend, you are interested in one particular lady. And then in your heart, you say that this lady, I love her. I like her. But you never open your mouth to tell her. How do we know? Then the other friend went forward and then spoke. And then the next thing, the lady came to say that, surprise, I have good news for you. You say, what good news? He said, I'm now in a relationship or so, so, and so is my beloved. Then you start crying. Oh, but I, I loved you in my heart. In your heart, but you didn't confess. That is why the Bible says in, in Romans 10, is that with the heart we believe 
and with the mouth we confess. So if you also say, I want, so Romans 10, 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto the salvation part. It is the mouth. So Jesus is also standing there looking at you. Say, you have to open your mouth and say, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Now, we have about five more minutes. What happens when you become born again? The Spirit of God will come upon you and into your heart. Then the inner part of you will be born and produced again. God gives you a new heart and spirit altogether. In Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26 to 27. The Bible says, a new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you an heart of flesh. Verse, seven, verse 27. And I will put my spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my statute. And ye shall keep my judgment and do them. Now, I'm reading what the prophet says. With your new spirit, you become a new man or a new creature. You are ready to live a new life. This new life is possible because you are actually a new person with a new heart. Now, I want to pause here to tell you that right now, as you are happy, I can see a lot of people on Facebook saying, wow, powerful. Some are even sending emojis of laughter. When we talk about the lady in love, you are in love. Now, why do you want to enjoy this wonderful blessing alone? Somebody must also enjoy this blessing. So, I want you to now share the link. Share the link. Put the link on your um, old school, JSS High School University, old student, alumni, and then extended family page. Somebody in your family must hear about this thing about salvation and born again. And your office page. Office page. You send it. If they say we don't share religious things, you send and later you say, oh sorry, then you delete later. But you send now. Send it. Put it on. Uh, we have all been on some pages where people have sent some very bad pictures. Then later they say, oh, we, we didn't see. Sorry for left. So you to send a link that is sharing the gospel. When we close, then you say sorry for right. This one is right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Share the link now. Share the link. Share with as many possible. And remember, we are, we are, we have started taking your questions. What question do you have to ask tonight? Ask now. Now let me keep on reading. To be born again is as, is as simple as that. People want to do complicated things, but becoming born again is very simple. So we have learned two points today. Becoming born again, number one, you must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Why do we say that? Because in First John chapter five, verse one, is there clearly, clearly is there. First John chapter five, verse one. That hallelujah. Now, who then is a born again Christian? Who then is a born again Christian? A born again Christian is someone who has personally received Jesus Christ into his life. And is determined to live a life controlled by the word of God. And under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Now this part is very important. Let me read it again. Who then is a born again Christian? A born again Christian is someone who has personally received Jesus Christ into his life. And is determined to live a life controlled by the word of God. And under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I love this definition. It's in the book, Key Fact. Because everybody says, I'm a Christian, me, I'm born again. But the definition is here. Yeah, definition somebody. Who is, a, who is a born again Christian? A born again Christian is someone who has personally received Jesus Christ into his life. And is determined to live a life controlled. The word of God is now controlling you. Whatever you are doing, there's a, there must be a reason in the Bible. Where is it written in scripture? Where is it written in the Bible? That person is now living under the control of the word of God and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to chapter 1. Chapter 1 
of key facts. Today we have learned two important scriptures. Don't forget. Don't forget two important scriptures. How to become born again. Number one, you must first believe in Jesus as the son of God. And what was the scripture? 1 John 5, 1. Everybody say after me, 1 John 5, 1. And the first part, the A, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ, is born of God. That is all. Everybody repeat after them. Say, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ, is born of God. Let's take it again, everybody. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ, is born of God. Can we do it alone? Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. 1 John 5, 1 E. 1 John 5. You alone, whilst you are watching me, we are saying it together. Ready, go. 1 John 5, 1. Uh -huh. Whosoever believeth that Jesus Christ is the Christ is born of God. Clap for yourselves. Hallelujah. <laughs> Well, it's time for questions. Many questions coming in. Now, there's a question here. He says, how can I help someone who says he is not a believer? What scriptures can I give him? Wow! I think before you even ask your question, we have first scripture. First John 5, 1. First John 5, 1 says that whosoever believed that Jesus Christ... Now, anytime... You are doing Bible study. The, the sentence you are seeing, when you negate it, it also means the same thing. For example, whosoever does not believe that Jesus Christ is born of God. Hey, wait, I've, I've messed up the scripture. Whosoever does not believe that Jesus is the Christ is not born of God. Now, the, the expression born of God also means born again. So, your, your question is answered clearly. Clearly. So, let's go to the next question. Today, we have about 15 minutes for questions. Now, this one says, what if you are born again, but you are still doing some of the sins you used to do, and you want to stop? That's not me. You have to be born again, again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I'm very happy about this particular um, question. Do you know why? Because as we, next week we continue, we are going to go into chapter 2. And chapter 2 is going, we're going to learn about key facts about salvation. When you become born again, what has really happened to you? So, what I want to tell you is that when you become born again, you have become born again. And that is why we are even having these Bible studies to let you understand. So, by the time we get to chapter 2, and then chapter 3. Chapter 3 is such powerful result of salvation. When you become born again, there are such things that have happened to you. Many Christians are not aware. Now, when these things, these things happen to you, you are born again. When you fall into that sin, what you need to do is to go back. I like your question. Like you are very determined that you don't want to, you want to stop. So you go back to God and ask for forgiveness of sins. You ask for forgiveness. So that doesn't mean that you are not born again. You are born again, but you fell into sin. And you come back to God. Never stay one more minute to say that, God, I don't know, I'm shy. Run to God. Say, Lord, I've come. That is why during the flow service, the prophet leads us to always pray to confess our sins. Next question. Hmm. Next question. I'm loving the questions. I like it, the questions. Is it possible to lose your righteousness? Since the Bible says we have become righteous, not by virtue of good works, lest any man should boast. Rather by being saved. Well, the last part of your question, I didn't really understand it. But I want you to know that when you become born again, okay, when you become born again, that is not the end of the race. It's a long race we have to continue fighting. So let me show you a scripture. Okay. I'll show you a scripture. In Philippians, that's it. We should work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Fear 
and trembling. Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So first of all, I want you to know when you become born again, it's not the end. There's so much to do to continue. We have to work out the salvation that we have received. Now, the only thing that will make you to fall from grace is when you say that you don't believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior again. Jesus is not the Christ. I don't believe in Jesus again. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next question. If we sin, do we still call ourselves sinners? Even though the Bible says we become new creations and righteous when we give our lives to Christ. Now, this is a very interesting question. Now, let me show you something from 1 John chapter 5. Mm. Now, I want to show you a scripture here. Mm, 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 mm. Yep. Keep on sharing the link. I want you to keep on sharing the link quickly. Keep on sharing the link. Share with as many people because we are having Bible study. And I believe that we are all being blessed. Oh, are you not being blessed? Yes. So, I want to show you a scripture. Hmm. Now, there's a scripture in 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter Three. Mm -hmm -hmm. Now, first one to the three, verse eight. First one to the three, verse eight. Now, first one to the three, verse eight says that whosoever, first one to the three, sorry. Verse 8. He that committed sin is of the devil. Now somebody say, hey, we are born again. The Bible says he that committed sin, then that means that like the born again. So the question that the person just asked right now, that, look, I am born again. I fall into sin. Bring the question back again. I'm going to show you something that will really surprise you. The question? Okay. The, the, you, you clean. Alright. Don't, don't, don't worry. Don't worry. Alright. Now, let me explain it to you right now. Look at the, look at the scripture again. He that committed sin is of the devil. Now, if you look at the amplified version of the scripture, he explains the word they committed very well, so you can understand. Now, listen to it. He says, but he who commits sin, into bracket, who practices. Now, when you become, a, when you become born again, your life is not, you, you may fall into sin, but you don't practice sin. The only way I can explain to you is that I drive a car, but I'm not a taxi driver. Now, the one who practices sin is like when he wakes up in the morning, the car is his work. Yango, he sits inside and then he's moving. But even though, even though you drive a car, you're not a Yango driver. You, you, you get inside and then you move to your workplace, you pack it. And then, so that is why you look at 1 John chapter 1, 1 John chapter 3, he says that whoever commits sin or practices is of the devil. Then again, when you come to 1 John chapter 1 verse 8, he said that if we, if we sin, so now what is he talking about? Now, you will see that here, the word commit is talking about an unbeliever who is not born again. It is his practice. He doesn't even know that what he's doing is wrong. One of the signs that you are born again is that the same sin that you used to do, now when you do, you are not so comfortable. You feel so sad. If you want to run away from church, we have to come and look for you. Come say, what, what has happened? Say, I've, I've done something bad. Because the Holy Spirit inside you does not, it's not in agreement. Have you seen? But remember that 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 is there for us. It means that he said that he said, if we confess, if we say we have no sin, he didn't say if we if we say we are if we not if we are not committing. So committing, that is practicing of the sin, is not our part. That's why we are not. But then if we say we have no sin and refusing to admit that we are sinners, so um, the question is that so if we sin eh, in a Christian as a Christian life, you are falling into sin. Do we call ourselves sinners? Well, we don't call ourselves sinners, we don't practice sin. 
But at that moment, you fell into the sin. You are not a young driver. You don't practice. That's not, you don't do it. You don't practice it. You fell into it. Rise up. I'm talking to somebody right now. You're falling into sin. Somebody's watching right now. You're falling into sin. Because of this, this Sunday, you didn't, you didn't even try to go to church. Even during the flow service, you put it off because you felt so dirty. First John chapter 1 verse is if we confess our sins, mm, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. That's the difference between somebody who has a car, who owns a car, and somebody who is practicing young go. They're two different things. He drives. We all drive. But one drives for just five minutes and then packs. One day, since morning, ah, he's on it. Mm. Let's go to the next question. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Once you give your life to Christ, do you ever stop doing wrong things? Knowingly and unknowingly. Wow. What a powerful question. Now, this question, even what we just talked about, answers part of the question that we just answered. Now, listen attentively. Hmm. I'm going to show you. So, I want you to listen attentively. Now, look at 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Is working. Hmm. First of the three verse four. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Now we are learning here that when you become born again, okay, sin is not what you practice. But God has also started a new work in you. If you remember Philippians, he said, He that has begun an, a good work, a good work that God has started in you is that. He is changing you as you are moving on. We don't become born again and then the next morning or the next day everything has changed drastically. He's working on you. He's working on you. He's working on you. So now, my friend, listen attentively. There are some sins that you'll be struggling with. But hey, let me give you, let me give you a very, very powerful... I, I heard Prophet talking about it, one of the flow prayers. Two things. When you're a Christian, never ever leave a secret sin in your life. Don't be a secret sin. Listen attentively. Two things. First John chapter 1 verse 8. He said that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. So there's confessing your sins to God. Very important. This confession of sins brings about cleansing of all righteousness. Now, in James chapter 5, in James chapter 5, James chapter 5, verse 16. He says, confess your fault one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Now, so there is the cleansing part and there's the healing part. So, listen attentively. Your question that you just asked, that as, a, as a Christian, you have sinned willfully or unwillfully. Whether it is willfully or unwillfully, make sure, listen to me, that you don't have a sin that is secret to you. You and the son, and the son, and then the person you are sinning with. Mm, let me say it well. And let me say it again. Make sure that as a born of it, again, Christian, the son, whether it is willful, the, 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 the son that you fall into without, oh, I've, that's, we learned it, the son of omission, son of commission. Whether it is willful, as you are saying, or make sure that in your life, as a Christian born again, you are walking in the light. So when we go back to 1 John chapter 1, before we get to verse 8, he said, if we, if we walk in the light, if we walk in the light, verse 7 says, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us. So the question of whether the sin is willful or unwillful, the way out is that walk in the light, whether it was a mistake or the, always make sure that you are opened. Your pastor, your shepherd. I know I've done something. It's really bothering me. What is it? Yesterday, I was going over internet and then something popped up. By the time I realized, no, I've spent five, five minutes. I've watched it. Uh, walk in the light. Say it as it is and be free. Because there is the part of the cleansing. And then there's the healing part. Most of the times we can pray, Lord, I pray, forgive me in the name of Jesus. Then you are cleansed. But you see that as you are moving around, your bones are getting rotten in you. 
Because there's a secret sin. So I repeat again. As a Christian, make sure there is no secret sin. The sin that is secret between you and the, the sin and the person with whom you sinned, there are two things. The doer and the doer. All of you. Walk in the light. Type, I am walking in the light. I am walking in the light. Yeah, when you walk in the light, whether it's a, a willful sin or a willful sin, we don't know other than that I confessed to God and I have also confessed to somebody very, who has a spiritual authority over me. Free. Clean. God has provided everything for us. Well, I think that we are, we are moving on. I think we are okay with the questions. Is that not so? Yeah. Now, if you have any other question, send the question and then make sure that um, next week we are going to attempt to answer your question. Guess what? Next week, um, Wednesday, we are going to continue with chapter 2, key facts about salvation. Today, we looked at how to become a born again Christian. Hallelujah. Well, it's time to give our offering. It's time to give our offering. I want you to take your offering, your phone, go to flow, uh, www.flowoffering.com or take a screenshot and then look at the, uh, if you are using an Apple phone or I don't know whichever phone that you are using, but God is also upgrading your phone during this season in the name of Jesus. Believe it. Believe it. Hallelujah. And give a powerful offering. Give a good offering. Wednesday night is a good time to also give a good offering. Hundred of of your currency, your denomination. Hallelujah. So give an offering tonight. Give an offering tonight. Give an offering tonight. Hallelujah. Give an offering. Father, thank you. Thank you for your blessing. <laughs> thank you. Oh, we give you thanks. We give you praise. Every giving, everywhere, right from the Antarctica to Australia to Asia, give your offering. Give in yen, give in rupee, give in what else? Kwacha. Kwacha. Yeah. And euros. And pounds. It's, it's 1057 in Nairobi as we are talking now. Yeah. And in New Delhi, it's 1 a.m., 127 a.m. I tell you. Los Angeles, we greet all of you. It is 1257 midday. And in New York, it is already 357, getting to 4. Hallelujah. <laughs> and we see Derek Akwete. Derek Akwete is walking in the light. Michelle Mijoya, we see you right here. Jebrew and then Natalie Mbewe. God bless you. God bless you. Let's go to YouTube and see who is the Ophabia Ajay. God bless you. We see you right here. Winifred Winnie Malemba and Famous Smith. God bless you, Famous Smith. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bessie Lizzie, Evelyn Booty. God bless you. We feel the connection. We feel the connection. Hallelujah. Make sure that you are giving powerfully. Powerfully. Hallelujah. Powerfully. Are, are you listening? Are you, are you watching? Now, let me quickly give you some few announcements. And then, before we give the announcement, I want to make an altar call right now. You are watching. Close your eyes with me. Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. You stumble on this station or you stumble on this station. You stumble on this YouTube page or Facebook page. You are watching and said, I'm not born again. I want to be born again. Listen to me. Jesus is Christ. He came to die so that your sins will be forgiven. Tonight, there is the provision of salvation for you. Close your eyes. Repeat this prayer after me. I want to read directly from our lesson today. There's a, a prayer here. So repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you as a sinner lost and condemned to hell I repent of my sins and I ask for your forgiveness I believe with all my heart 
that you died on the cross and rose up again for my sins. I open my heart to you and receive you as my Lord and my personal Savior. Please take control of my life and make me what you want me to be. From today, I am yours. You are mine. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful gift of salvation. Amen. You pray this prayer right now. I want you to send a message to the number on the screen. Say, Pastor, I gave my life to Jesus. Because this is Flow Church, so we are your pastors. We are going to get to you, and we are going to pray for you. We are going to get books for you to help you to grow. This is a church. What you are watching now is a real church with members who have been registered. Today, we had prayer time for our members. And some of you watching, I'm sure you received your prayers. Your prayer requests. We, have, we are responding to your prayer requests with powerful prayers. Yeah. If you are watching and you received the prayer today, let us know. So, we are registering members. There's a QR code coming on the screen. Please make sure you take a screenshot. Or go to theflowchurch.online Make sure you register. This is a church. Flow Church is an online church. We have pastors who are going to call you, who are going to call you, visit you where you are. No matter where you are, we'll visit you through technology. Pray for you. Ah! Within the last two days, one of our members, the husband left here. The flow pastors gathered in prayer. And the, after two months, the husband, me, the, the husband sent her a message today. That was yesterday. And today, by the time we are coming to church, she has sent another message that my husband has called me. And now, he said, as my husband is talking, he's using we, us. He said, ah, something has happened. So it's a real church with pastoral care. So please <laughs> put the screen, put the thing on again. You, you register and then you become um, we are going to reach out to you hallelujah well ladies and gentlemen I just want to remind you we are giving our offering in case you have not yet sent your offering please send your offering right here in the studio send your offering send your offering send your offering please everybody in this auditorium send your offering Samuel Abwaji God bless you Ivy Suswole Ampofo. <laughs> God bless you as well. From Kenya. Ivy Zoe. Ah, Ivy Zoe says, I did. I'm yet to listen to it. She received her prayers. They are not, it's not a play here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, today is Wednesday. Tomorrow is Thursday. Friday at 4 a.m. GMT. We are going to have our flow prayer meeting with the prophet. Hallelujah. I can't wait to pray again. We are becoming more spiritual. Is that not so? Becoming more spiritual. Just praying in tongues and praying. And guess what? We have many more testimonies for you. Many more testimonies. Now, today, there's a feature in today's midweek service. We are going to receive blessings, prayer. Today's blessings and prayers. And I'm going to let you know. You know, I feel that today a lot of <laughs> I feel that today a lot of questions were about sins. If I'm a Christian, I fall into sin and sin and sin. So there's something I want to tell you about sin, transgression, and iniquity. Do you realize that these three things? <laughs> sometimes you, you, you feel that the Bible is just using those words interchangeably. Mm? Sin, transgression, and what? Iniquity. It's not. It is it, not. They are not different words for like being used interchangeably. Most of the time, say prophet is Lena. Let's pray for our sins. Let's pray for what our. Let's confess and pray for our iniquities, our transgressions. So listen attentively so that you can understand. Many of us are like, what about sin now? Sin, eh? Sin. I don't know whether all of you, you understand football. When you, are, when you are playing football, eh? Number one, 
You have to score. If you play the football, you don't score. It's not good. Sin is like playing the football. You didn't score. You, you missed the mark. What you're supposed to do, you didn't do. You're supposed to score. You didn't score. That's sin. That's why you have to always pray for forgiveness of sins. Now, transgression is that the football you are playing, there's a white. There's a white. Yeah. Hallelujah. There's a white. Listen. When you are playing the football and then you come out of it, what is it? It's foul. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, out. That's transgression. You are not supposed to come out. You have come out. Iniquity is that your opponent is going to score. You are behind him. What do you do? Something inside you say that you should do evil him. That's iniquity. So, have you seen a football that we are playing that we have, you don't, any of these don't happen? Aye. Foul. So, that's that, that Christian life. So, moving then, then cross the line. Something. But the blood of Jesus washing us and cleansing us. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of our midweek service today. God bless you. And we want to say thank you to our prophets. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity given to us to be part of the flow service. And we are going to receive the blessings for the day. Are you ready for the blessings for the day? The, the week, the blessings for the week. Hallelujah. May the Lord find you at home. home. Amen. And bless you at home. Amen. Amen. May the Lord come to your room. Wow. And bless you where it matters. In the name of Jesus. Not what people think yes, Lord. you need. Mm. Or what people want for you. Yes, Lord. But what the Lord Himself knows yes, Jesus. is good for you. Hallelujah. The Lord give you peace. Amen. Amen. The Lord give you peace at home. I receive it. And bless your family. I receive it. The Lord enable you to work for Him. I receive it. For some more years. Amen. The Lord give you health and strength. Amen. And the Lord renew your love yes. for him. Hallelujah. That you may serve him more. The name of Jesus. For many more years. Hallelujah. With the residue of your years, yes, yes, Lord. you shall serve him. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine. Amen. Amen. On you. Amen. And give you peace. Yes, Lord. May the Lord establish you. In the name of Jesus. And settle you. Yes, Lord. Strengthen you, yes, Lord. Make you stable in the name of Jesus. The Lord heal you, yes, Lord. Of whatever has disturbed you, I receive it. What is a source of pressure, Jesus, and crisis, yes, Lord. The Lord heal it, I receive it. The Lord restore you, I receive help you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. May the Lord, hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah, amen. God bless you for joining, amen.